It was slight, didn't really affect things too bad. Open Grove Raceway and MultiGP is a match made in heaven, but first let's talk about Drone Champions League. When all the team directors and designers took a look at the DCL requirements list, I'm pretty sure they had a similar impression that I did, which is, what on earth are these guys doing? These rules are absolutely ridiculous. But after just taking them as rule and working with them, I have to say the final product is pretty awesome, way more awesome than I ever expected, and I'm way more excited for Drone Champions League than I ever could have been, and it's because of the quad and the setups and all these things that they're going to be racing. Now some of the ridiculous requirements include a 325mm corner to corner size, which is large enough to swing 9 inch props, a 4S battery that can't be more than like 200 something grams, which pretty much means you can only run a 4S 1900mAh battery, not even 1900mAh battery. The minimum weight, the minimum weight is 780 grams. And those are just some of the requirements. But what if I told you that this massive quad can make it around this multi-GP track in about the same time as the 5-inch 6S Super Racer? Shockingly, that's actually true. Doma FPV flew about 10 packs on this track in practice on the 6S 5-inch Racer, and then he flew a pack on the DCL quad. Again, this is 800 grams-ish with a 4-cell battery that's actually smaller than the 6-cell battery on the 6S 5-inch quad. And his lap times after maybe two practice laps were about the same, consistently about the same as the 5-inch 6S racer. Now, I know everybody's talking about 4S versus 6S, but this throws a huge wrench in the whole thing. Yeah, of course, this massive quad with this tiny battery, comparatively speaking, can't make it around the track for as long as a 6S quad, definitely. But who would have thought that this enormous weight handicap would allow this quad to still be competitive? What's amazing here is that we've reached a point where the quads are performing really incredible, but piloting skill is still paramount over everything else. You can give a complete piece of junk to an extremely skilled pilot and they will be competitive. I asked a couple of racers what they thought about this, uh, like car racers and FPV racers, and uh, Jordan Tempkin actually said it best. He said that, well, if you drive faster to work, if you drive five miles per hour faster to work, you're not really going to get to work any faster. But if you take a shortcut on the way to work, well, that will save you a whole bunch of time. The line you take and the way you manage the track matters so much more than the outright speed of your quad that all you need is something that can actually execute the task and you will be competitive, which is the same thing I've said from the very beginning. As long as your quad is within the competitive range, you are top league competitive and it's entirely your piloting skill. Now another interesting distinction, Doma FPV and Muo FPV, these two guys are arguably the top couple pilots in the world. They are so fast, it's mind-blowing. When I watch them fly through the goggles, I am, I'm actually afraid because they're going so fast. The frames are flying by so quickly, it's mind-blowing. So Mio FPV prefers the 2207-1722 motors on 6S which, with his frame, which is, which is actually a really cool frame because the setup, I personally think, is the ideal setup for 6S because the battery now has more heft and weight to it, so we really do need to consider where we put the battery. Doma, or Andy, he prefers the 2205-1722 kV, and he's tested the 2205 against the 2207, and he's actually faster on the track with the 2205. Now, the weight difference on, these, on the quads, it's essentially the same quad with different motors, so the weight difference is not that extreme. The 2207 is about 30 grams, the 2205 is about 26, 27 grams, and he himself is confused that why on earth is the 2205 faster than the 2207 for him? He can't tell. Now, I've got a couple of theories. I honestly have no clue myself, but my theory is that the 2205 is a lighter motor out of the end of the quad, so when you do give it stick inputs, the quad just responds more immediately. You know, I know we're running S-Bus and all this super fast everything, and everything already responds so quickly. Why would a couple grams on the end of the arms make a difference? 
But when I personally fly 2205 motors or lighter motors on a quad, I feel it myself. I just feel the sense of nimble. It just it just feels so nimble in, in when I'm moving the stick around. And that's what I account his ability to go faster, is just more direct control to the quad. And the reason why Muo probably likes his 2207s more is because the battery is in a better position to balance all the weight on the quad. So a little bit more weight on the end of the arms with bigger motors doesn't actually make a huge difference and it can still respond extremely quickly. And he prefers the 2207 for the same reason that I prefer the 2207. When I fly any 2205, unless it's a super light, it has no power below 50%. It, you, just, it, you just feel nothing. It's just like nothingness. You're flying entirely in the top... 50 to 40 to 50% of your throttle range. But now let's take a look at Open Grove Raceway and the multi GP setup. And it's really incredible to see how much this whole area has developed. Racing and multi GP. Check out what they're using. They're using quad diversity on every single channel. And they're running eight quads on every single heat, which is insane because there's never a single person complaining of video issues. They've got all the video wires hanging from the ceiling. People, all the pilots come in, plug in, and fly, and it's it was the, it was one of the smoothest, smoothest setups I had seen on any race day anywhere, and I was totally blown away. And these these quad diversity boxes that they have, they can actually daisy chain them together around the track if needed for more intricate courses in the future if they want. The setup just takes a little bit longer, of course. That's all for now. Sorry, I've been really really busy with work. I've got the FreeSky x Lite on the way, which somebody at the track had one, and it actually feels really, really high quality. Unfortunately, the stick throw is a little bit shallow, but I'm going to look into that, see what I can do about that. I have the Underground FPV Nirvana on the way, and by the way, it's up for pre-sale on quadlab.io, and I'm really looking forward to that one as well. I've got the new Hyperlite motors coming with the Popo Pro shaft, which I'm really, really looking forward to because I'm really hoping that it's going to solve all my problems with the Popo shaft because I love it. I cannot thank Open Grove Raceway enough and everybody that manages that place. They do an incredible job. It, I, As far as I know, it's the benchmark for a racing arena. As far as I've seen, I can't, I can't say enough good things about them. Keep flossing all week and I'll try to find more time a little bit later.